Hey guys and welcome back. So I'm joined here by tennis stringing legend Paul Skip. Now if you don't know Paul already, Paul is the head stringer at Wimbledon and we're very very lucky to have him here at the Avenue Tennis. Now the reason I've got Paul with me today is I've had a few people ask questions about what type of strings I use, what sort of tension I use and I thought Paul's probably the best person to talk about it. So in this video we're going to talk through the basics of restringing your racket and some of the reasons why you should restring your racket and how often you should as well. So hey Paul. Hi Ashley. Ashley. Lovely to have you. Yeah, thanks. So, First question, Paul. Um, when we're talking about restrings, that I know there are different types of strings. Could you tell us about the string types? Yeah, sure. So uh, we normally say there's four main families of string: uh, synthetic gut, multi-filament, polyester, and natural gut. There's one other, but it's not very used very often, so we don't really cover that. For most players, we're looking at those four different types of string. So for a synthetic gut, it's just a basic nylon string. It's nice, it's crisp, it's not going to do a fantastic job, good all-round string and it's going to be okay for club players. Uh, but it's not going to give you a lot of performance, it's not going to give you a lot of spin, it's not going to give you a lot of power. Good for juniors, maybe some older players, not performance players string. So, so that's synthetic gut, so how does that compare to natural gut? Compared to natural gut, strangely enough synthetic gut has no relationship to natural gut. Natural gut in itself is basically, it comes from the intestines of cows and hence that's why it's expensive. In my opinion natural gut is actually the best string out there, it will give you the most comfort, the most power, the most control, the best size of sweet spot, best vibration dampening and it holds tension very very well. Uh, obviously for people in this country the weather is a little bit sort of <laughs> not good as we can see today. In the snow? Yeah, it, this was not ideal natural gut weather. Great in the summer when it's nice and hot, when it's a bit damp it's not the best thing to use to be honest. Yeah, so I, I know a few players that I work with that have a natural gut string but they also have a different string type for weather conditions like this so you know if it is a wet day they tend to put their natural gut string away and, and play with some, something different. Is that quite a common thing? Yeah, I mean it's a good idea to do and in fact actually the best option to a natural gut is a multi-filament. So multi-filament is usually a PU based string maybe mixed with a couple of other materials. It's nice, it's soft, it's comfortable to use, it's great for the arm, so tennis elbow, anything like that. Very good for that. Um, it's got good feel, it's got good control. So it really is sort of a true synthetic gut. Um, downsides of it, it can go a little bit mushy after a while and it won't give you the spin like some of the other strings can do. So again, older players, maybe with tennis elbow, uh, it's definitely a very good alternative. Yeah. And the multi-filament is kind of made from multi-fibres. You know, classically you'll see when the strings start to go, they almost start to fray. Yeah, is exactly, that right? exactly. That's why it mimics natural gut. Once the coating starts to wear, you start seeing those internal fibres and then they start breaking down very, very quickly. So just to summarise string types then, if I was looking for the most durable string, what would it be? The actual durable, i.e. the one least likely to break quickly, is polyester. And the polyester has become probably the biggest evolution in tennis over the last 30 or so years. It's why the pros can, you know, hit big, hit with lots of spin, you hit like dipping balls. You know, it's the biggest revolution we've had. It is very durable. But the thing is to look at polyester is polyester is actually a performance string. So it's going to give you great control, great spin, you know, hit those accurate shots, the dipping shots, great for serves, big forehands, things like that. What it doesn't do, it doesn't hold tension very well. So what it will actually do is it'll die away quite quickly. And you could have a playability life of somewhere between 8 to 12, maybe 15 hours if you're lucky before it actually drops the tension and will just not play anything like it used to do. Durability, absolutely, big hitter, it'll make you last, uh, hit those shots last a little bit longer compared to something like a synthetic gut, certainly a multi-filament, um, but really if you're uh, leaving it in there too long you're just not going to get performance out of it, so it's better to actually cut it out and have it re-strung really more often. Yeah, so lots to consider when thinking about string types and I guess it, it kind of comes down to your game style and what you want from the racket. Absolutely, I mean we can fit it into certain types of players, so like I said juniors, better with the synthetic guts, multi-filaments, uh, natural gut probably not because it's quite expensive. For the performance players, definitely looking at 
polyesters, different types of polyesters. They're going to give you the control, they're going to give you the spin. Obviously, if you're playing a lot, they're going to give you that durability as well. For the older players, we're looking more at sort of synthetic guts, multi-filaments and natural guts. Again, we want to make it comfortable, obviously, as our bodies start breaking down as we get older, more prone to injury. We want to make that nice and comfortable. Polyesters are really definitely off the board unless you are a high performance player. Okay, so that was really interesting. So let's talk about tension now. So how does the tension of your V-string affect what you get from the racket? Okay, so uh, we have a few general rules. Basic ones are if you want more power, you string lower. If you want more control, you string tighter. A lot of people think it's the other way round. Uh, but basically, the string will actually rebound like a trampoline. So the lower it is, the ball will compress less, which means all the energy is going to come from the string. If it's nice and tight when the ball hits the string, the ball compresses and there's no energy coming back or less energy coming back from the tighter string bed. So again, lower, more power, tighter, more control. But also lower will give you, make it more comfortable. So again, for older players, for juniors or beginners trying to just feel their way into the game to give them a bit of encouragement. Lower is definitely better. You'll also get a bigger sweet spot. Things have changed with the advent of a big spin game now. So lower strings can actually help with that because it allows, particularly if you mix it with polyester strings, it will allow you to actually create a little bit more spin. Obviously you've got to have your technique down to as well. Um, so that will really help. Um, if you have tighter, then you're probably going to get slightly less spin because the strings just can't move as much. Um, obviously tighter, you are going to get that extra control, so those performance players may want to go a little bit tighter um, just to make sure they're not overhitting or hitting the ball long. Obviously tighter can also make it more uncomfortable. So again, if you've got an older player, wrong string, so polyester, that's not going to do their arm any good. Or in fact, obviously anyone with suffering with tennis elbow we don't need them to have tighter strings. We want to make it nice and comfortable for them, so that's where we go for that loose attention to do that. Nice, because you know tennis elbow and golfer's elbow are quite common issues that we see with club players. You know, partly down to technique, but actually a lot is down to the equipment they're using and the, and the strings that they're using or the tension. So would you suggest a slightly looser tension and potentially a multi-filament or a softer string for those people with tennis elbow? Yes, yeah, so for tennis elbow or in fact anyone with some sort of wrist or arm injury or anything like that, definitely softer strings, ideally natural gut, but again as we've said with the weather it's a little bit tricky at the moment. Multi-filaments for sure, go that lower tension, get that larger sweet spot, make it more comfortable, let the racket do more of the work, don't overdo your arm. Yeah, good, really, really good stuff. And um, there was an interesting story you told me once before, uh, it was when we first met and I was asking about all of the pros that you've strung rackets for and I asked who is um, or have you ever strung a really, really loose tension for somebody and on the flip side, have you ever strung a really, really tight tension for somebody? And can you remind me, what was the, the loosest tension you've ever strung? Uh, so the loosest tension that I have actually ever strung is for Daniel Nestor, who was a doubles player, he's retired now. So he had a hybrid of string, natural gut and polyester, and he was stringing as low as, I believe if I can recall right, like 15 pounds on the mains, 13 pounds on the crosses. So the main... So just, just for, for the viewers, so... 15, 1, 5, okay, 15, not 50, and 13, not 30, which, to put into perspective, I, I have mine strung at 52, so 15 and 13 pounds yeah. is incredible, and I can't even get my head around it, and I'd love to try it one day. So. Yeah, well, yeah, I think let's, let's do that one day, I'll string up really low, and then we can actually see what happens with that. And so, so remind me, why, why would a player want it that loose? Um... My feeling with, with Danny Nesta, because he's a doubles player, I think for him it's all about getting the first volley away, coming in behind the serve, and obviously a lot of doubles at pro level is a bit reactionary, so the more energy that he can put into the ball straight off, funny off, straight off the bat, I think that's where it's going to help him. Not, obviously, tensions for players, uh, all players, is a personal thing, trying to find that right tension, um, and obviously he found that going low 
um, was the best thing for him to do. I guess a lot less work when he's at the net, you know, less of a swing needed when you've got that loose tension. You know, you get the energy off of the strings as opposed to off of the swing. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's all about that quick, short punch on the volley. That's what he wanted, I suspect. Great, great. So, can you remember a time where you've, you've strung a racket very tightly? So, uh, one of the t people who strings the tightest on tour was Dustin Brown. Um, I've strung up to about 37 kilos, which off the top of my head, you're probably looking in the round about the 82 pound mark. Wow. So that's very, very tight. But also with that, I'm just going to throw this in there as a side bit, he uses pre-stretch, which is basically where we pre-stretch the string before we actually finalise it at, at that 37 or so kilos. And it comes out like a board. Um, we've asked him why. He says if he strings too low, he doesn't find the touch, which is a little bit strange thing for you know us to understand. Obviously, he's a pro; they do things slightly differently. But if you notice his game, he's he's a relatively flat hitter. It's almost like, to be honest, using a frying pan, um, and he just finds he just gets that touch. And he's a strong guy, so yeah. So he finds the power when he needs it, but actually his game revolves around you know his skill, his ability to feel the ball around the court. So. Absolutely, for you know he he needs that, and if it's obviously too low, he's just not going to get that. Field. Yeah, interesting. So I would suggest if you're watching this, don't get your racket stronger at 82 pounds, um, but it works for Dustin. So um, yeah, an interesting one. So um, you mentioned about the different string types, and obviously in different string types there are also different string shapes and different string gauges as well. Could you just briefly talk about Yeah, that? sure. So uh, obviously strings come in different thicknesses. Um, usually for most people we're looking at a about a 1.2 millimeter to 1.3 millimeter thickness um, doesn't sound like a difference but once you start putting it into your racket particularly if you have something like a, an 18 20 so 18 mains 20 crosses that will really close up the difference between a 1.2 millimeter and a 1.3 millimeter um, the benefits are obviously 1.3, the thicker strings should be more durable, so again if you're a big string breaker then that will really help, obviously if you're playing a lot or you know, you've got a child who's playing a lot, go for those thicker strings for the durability to help offset potential breakages. The thinner strings should actually bite a little bit more on the ball and interestingly enough they tend to be a little bit more elastic, so again if you are someone suffering from tennis elbow then actually thinner, softer strings is better than thicker strings. Yeah. Um, it's just it stretches, yeah. you know, twice uh, up to twice the amount more. It sounds a bit strange in saying that. I won't go too much into that, but that is the basics of it. And then obviously when we come into the shape of things, most strings are round, except when we get into polyester, where we've started to get a fantastic range of different shapes of strings now because it's a lot easier to manufacture with the polyester with it. You can't really do that with the synthetics or the multis or the uh, natural guts. So we can have triangular shapes, square, uh, heptagonal, you can have gear-shaped ones. The whole idea behind that is just trying to get more bite on the ball and more spin on the ball. That's what it's all aimed <coughs> to do. There's yeah. no advantage with the durability or anything like that. Um, it's all about trying to get the control and trying to get the spin. Yeah. Um, and that's where the, the different shapes will come Great. into play. And when you talk about bite, you've mentioned that word a couple of times, you're talking about the friction between the string bed and the ball to really create that spin, you know, whether it be slice or topspin. Yeah, absolutely. It's for the ability for the string to grip onto the ball, because obviously there should be more friction you can do. Hopefully the more spin you can produce. Um, it won't, uh, shape strings won't turn a flat hitter into a Raf and a Dow overnight, that's never going to happen because you need the technique to do that. But what those strings may help you do is enhance your technique to get a little bit more spin. Just don't expect you, like I said, to turn it into a spin monster. Yeah, awesome. So, final questions then. How often should you get your racket restrung? We know how important it is, you know, to have fresh strings in your racket. You know, it's the part of your racket that hits the tennis ball, and, and obviously, it's so important for you to enjoy your tennis and for it to feel comfortable. But how often should you have your racket strung? So, uh, the old adage used to be the same number of times a week you play you should have it strong in the year so if you're a once a week player at least once a year my personal preference is basically say at least twice a year um, now for us in the uh, in the UK where obviously we have a changing climate through the year I normally say match it to the start of the season so spring summer 
you know, definitely have it strung then, you know, it's going to get a little bit warmer. If you're playing on a faster surface, you may need a little bit extra control. And then when you get to the winter, obviously like it is now, it's a bit cooler, the balls are heavier, potentially picking up a lot of moisture. Maybe string a little bit lower, because then that will obviously help you actually get a little bit more oomph on the ball, make the ball go a little bit deeper. Obviously, if you're a performance player, when they break, you get it done, you know, as soon as you can. But if you're a strong polyester player, then you may want to consider stringing more often because, like I said, that performance level will drop off. So if you're someone playing, you know, maybe three, four times a week, I would be looking to say, yeah, you should consider ideally every month, but at a push every two months. Try and keep it nice and fresh. Try and have a nice fresh one in your bag at all times. Yeah. And if you are a player that doesn't break your strings very often, what sort of things will you feel that over time, you know, if you, if you are leaving it a few months before a restring, how will the playability drop? What sort of things will you, will you start to see? So what will happen is obviously the, the big thing is the tension loss will go. So when we get it nice and fresh, the string's going to be full of energy. As it goes over the period of time, you'll find that actually you're not quite getting the same response. Things aren't quite going as fast or as hard as what you want them to do. And the problem that we then have with that is that people overextend themselves trying to hit the ball as hard as what they had when they had new strings. As soon as you start doing that, that's when you want to change because otherwise you're just going to risk yourself over injuring yourself. And yeah. that's why we don't want them. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for talking, Paul. It's been fantastic information. And um, if any of you have any questions about what Paul's said or if you'd like any more detail, I am going to spend a bit of time with Paul making a few more videos. You know, it might be that we try out a few different tensions during a hit. It might be that we talk a little bit more detail about certain things. It could be string patterns or different string types, that sort of thing. So pop a comment below if you've got any questions for Paul and hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Take care.